from Washington, this is VOA News. President Obama holds a Friday news conference. Zimbabwe election results to be determined in court. I'm Vincent Bruce reporting from Washington. U.S. President Barack Obama Friday announced new steps aimed at helping to reassure Americans about government electronic surveillance programs used to protect against terrorism. As VOA senior White House correspondent Dan Robinson reports, Mr. Obama also discussed relations with Russia and threats from al-Qaeda and affiliated groups. Mr. Obama said he will work with Congress to pursue appropriate reforms including greater oversight and transparency to a program that collects telephone records, which he again called an important tool to disrupt terrorist plots. Mr. Obama also fielded questions about his decision to cancel a summit with Russian President Vladimir Putin, in part because of tensions over Moscow's decision to grant temporary asylum to Snowden. Saying he does not have a bad personal relationship with Mr. Putin, Mr. Obama cited cooperation with Russia on issues such as Afghanistan, Iran, and nuclear arms reduction. Mr. Obama noted he will still be attending the G20 summit in St. Petersburg. Dan Robinson, VOA News, the White House. The U.S. State Department has ordered the departure of all its non-emergency staff from the U.S. consulate in Lahore, Pakistan, due to specific threats. The State Department also issued a travel warning urging U.S. citizens to defer all non-essential travel to Pakistan because of ongoing security concerns in the South Asian nation. Further details at voanews.com. In Zimbabwe, Prime Minister Morgan Svangirai has asked the country's highest court to nullify last week's re-election of President Robert Mugabe. Africa's oldest leader was declared the winner of the July, of the July 31st election, but as Sebastian Mofu reports from Arare for VOA, the Zimbabwean leader does not know when he will be sworn in. Last week, the Zimbabwe Election Commission declared that President Mugabe had handily defeated Prime Minister Changrai 61 to 34%. On Friday, just before the close of business, Douglas Monzora, a spokesman for Mr. Changrai's MDC party, came out of the Constitutional Court. The Movement for Democratic Changes filed its election petition. The prayer that we seek is that this election be declared null and void. It is not clear when Mr. Mugabe might take the oath of office for a new term. The Constitutional Court has 14 days to dispose of the case. Sebastian Mofu for VOA News, Harare. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry opened his meeting in Washington between U.S. and Russian officials Friday stressing it is important for the two nations to find ways to make progress on missile defense and other strategic issues, including Afghanistan, Iran, North Korea, and Syria. Speaking at the State Department, Kerry said he and Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov agree the Syrian conflict is both nations' top priority in terms of crisis settlement. Well, Sergei and I do not always agree completely on uh, responsibility for the bloodshed or on some of the ways forward, both of us and our countries agree uh, that to avoid institutional collapse and descent into chaos, uh, the ultimate answer is a negotiated political solution. 22-year-old Kwasi Mohammed Nafis, a Bangladeshi student, has been sentenced to 30 years in a U.S. prison after admitting he tried to blow up the Federal Reserve Bank in New York. Nafis faced a life term in the bomb plot last year, acknowledging he intended to use a cell phone to detonate a 454-kilogram explosive at the Federal Reserve Bank located near the site of the World Trade Center Towers that al-Qaeda terrorists destroyed in 2001. Prosecutors said that Nafis sought assistance over the Internet to carry out his plot, but one of his contacts turned out to be a government informant. 
An encrypted email service in the United States believed to have been used by U.S. leaker Edward Snowden has shut down in what appears to be response to pressure from the government. The email company Lavabit posed, uh, or posted a message on its website saying the service is being suspended. Owner and operator Ledar Levison wrote in the message that he cannot share the reason because of U.S. laws against it. He said he had twice made the appropriate requests to share the information. Researchers believe they've found a new way to screen people for tuberculosis. Researchers from Britain's University of Southampton, led by Paul Elkington, have found increased amounts of proteins released as diseased lungs break down. More details at voanews.com, 24 hours a day. I'm Vincent Bruce, VOA News, reporting from Washington.